I've been really bored in quarantine because of the plague, and I thought, what better way to pass the time than to simulate the plague in Minecraft? If I just go ahead and press this button, a bunch of creepers will appear, and then when I press this start simulation button, you'll see that one of them and now more of them are starting to glow. If I just step back a little bit here and kind of watch what happens, you can see that it's spreading really rapidly and that is because this glowing effect is actually being treated like a virus. How this works is that any creeper that has the virus has a chance to pass it on to any creeper standing near it. Within four blocks, there's a very low chance, two blocks is slightly higher, and one block is very high. Even after this short amount of time, this virus has already pretty much spread to most of the board. There's still this one little corner that hasn't gotten it yet, but it'll only be a matter of time before one of them walks over here and they all get infected. You probably noticed that some of them are dying. That's because any creeper that has the virus has a 10% chance to end up being killed by it, and if that random roll fails, then they're just cured of it and can't be infected anymore. You may have also noticed that the creepers are walking a little bit faster than they usually do. That's because I have slightly boosted their movement speed just to uh, get them to interact with each other a little bit more. The simulation is entirely based on random chances, and that wandering mechanic is one of those things that adds to the randomness. Whether they contract the virus, or whether they die from it, or whether they're cured from it, is all completely based on random rolls. Now you may have also noticed this graph right here that's tracking the progress. The black line at the top is the total population, so as the creepers die this will slowly decrease. The blue is creepers that have not been yet affected by the virus, and if you actually look at the scoreboard tracker on the side of my screen it said that there's now zero creepers unaffected, which is why this blue line has come to an end. The red one, as you may have guessed, is the number infected, so there was a really big spike at the beginning and now it's kind of starting to trail off. And the green one is the amount that have been cured of the virus. So for a while, since none of them had been cured, it wasn't tracking. And then it slowly started to rise up and now it is approaching the total population. By the end of this, once all of the infected creepers have either died or been cured, this graph will stop tracking and the green line will be overlaid on the black line. They'll have the same value. It's only been a couple of minutes and this simulation is already almost over. It says that there's still zero creepers unaffected. The ones that have been cured can't get the virus again, so really all we're waiting for here is for the remaining ones to either die or be cured. Now there are actually a whole bunch of different parameters that go into this simulation. For example, the chance to either be cured or die, and the chance to spread the virus to the creeper's neighbors. There is one added statistic for creepers that have been cured to recontract the virus, and at the moment it is set to zero just for maximum simplicity, so to speak. It looks like we are just about at the end of the simulation. There's only two left that are infected, and that means that the graph looks like what it's going to look like at the very end. Now this graph does have some key characteristics, like I explained earlier. The blue one starts high and then curves down, the red one spikes and then trails off, and the green one starts low and then eventually approaches the maximum value. It turns out there actually is a standard model using a differential equation for predicting how viruses behave, and when you apply that differential equation on a graph, you'll get a much cleaner looking version that actually looks quite a bit like this. So I was really proud of myself for programming a simulation that very closely sticks to what the real world models look like. Now I wanted to pull up some differential equation modeling software and show you what that initial model was, but you know, I thought why not just build it in Minecraft? So naturally that's exactly what I did. If I take this graph pointer and right click a location on the graph, that will set the initial population of creepers and the game will actually run the same differential equation that the professionals use to model virus spread. I'll just go ahead and do that. And as you can see, it actually does look quite similar to the graph that was generated by my creeper simulation. The difference being that this one actually uses math, whereas the other one just tracks the amount of creepers that are still alive. This isn't just running some hard-coded function to place armor stands in certain places. It actually is running a full-on differential equation, and it does completely rely on the initial position where I click. If I start the initial population higher, the graph will follow and lower. There's also some other parameters that I can change. So I've just set the cure rate to a slightly higher value, and if I click in the same place, 
The structure of the graph actually changes. It's probably easier to see if I start it a little bit higher. And there, that actually looks more similar to the graph that was created by my simulation over there. And before you ask, no, I didn't just create an entire differential equation solving software just for this data pack. I had actually created a differential equation data pack long beforehand, and I just decided to repurpose it a little bit for the purposes of this particular simulation. If you guys want me to, I will actually show off that differential equation modeling data pack in more detail in a future video, but for now, let's just get back to the original simulation. So I mentioned earlier that there were other parameters I could change and what I'm going to do now is just show a few time lapses of various simulations with those parameters changed and hopefully that will give you a better idea of how this whole data pack works. about it for today if you enjoyed please leave a comment i always appreciate that and hopefully i will see you around in a future video